So guys, I have started recording of this particular session and this is just for your consent. So uh, anyone, any, any question before we start for this particular session? No, sir. Okay, great. Good to know. So, first of all, let me tell you, this is our EC2 console home. This is AWS console, like all the services, whatever you want to see, you can go directly go here. You will click here. So, it will take you to AWS console home. All your recent visited services will be visible here. This is services section. So whatever offerings AWS has as of today, those services are listed down here. There is a long list. You can check whether you are talking to storage, security, identity, satellite, robotics, quantum technology and all. So whatever kind of offerings AWS has, these are listed down here. Then after if you want to look for any specific thing, you can search for that particular stuff here within the search box. This is Cloud Shell. Like if you want to perform this operations with the help of some command line interface, you can use this Cloud Shell and this will allow you to perform all the operations in command line mode as well. It is not mandatory or it is not necessary that you should be performing all the things with the help of this GUI console, which we are able to see here. You can perform same things with the help of this CLI. This is notification section. Like if you have any kind of notification within your account, for example, some services which you are utilizing, those are down. Those notifications will be here. If any of AWS service is down within any reason, that notification would be available here. If you want to look for some kind of support help, you want to see kind of documentation. These are available here within this particular section, this question mark. Now, these are the reasons. Now, what are the reasons? Reasons are geographical areas where AWS has built one or more data centers. So minimum number of data center which AWS builds within any region is two or great or more than two. So the minimum number of data centers are available. These are two within AWS. Then after it is my account information like my account ID. I, if I want to see my organizations, my billing, billing console, security credential settings, like if I want to log out or something. So these sort of things I can definitely see on this particular page. Right. Okay. So now let us talk, let us move on to EC2, the very first service. And this service is pretty much utilized within every organization. If any organization is working on AWS, then, then this is for sure. They usually have EC2 machines. EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Compute. EC2 means Elastic Cloud Compute. The C is getting repeated two times. That is why it is known as EC2. Okay. So this is dashboard like how many running instances are there. That particular stuff will be visible here. Like if you have instances, but those, those are not into running state, those are stopped. So that will be visible here. Placement groups, if you have, now what is volume? So the kind of thing which we know, uh, which we call as storage, which we call as disk. Those things are available here or those things are visible under this particular category, which is known as disk. Right, then after dedicated host. So AWS has such kind of features that we can ask AWS to provide our dedicated servers. Like those servers will not be shared with any, any of the other, any other customer of AWS, those will be dedicated for us. So if you want to have those kind of servers, those will be visible under dedicated host. Now, what is advantage of it and how we are going to know that, okay, we have dedicated hosts. These are going to be listed here. Second thing. So as within last session, we discussed that AWS is a public cloud and anyone can create resources onto any shared server. 
so this dedicated host will not be a shared server this will be dedicated to you only as a client as a customer of aws only you will have access to this particular server now what is key pairs so guys whenever we create a lab whenever we install an operating system or whenever we create a virtual machine or whenever we install a physical server we install an uh, like kind, kind of operating system into a physical machine we need to create username and password in order to log into that right but since it is cloud platform so in this particular case we usually do not get username and password so in order to log into that particular machine which we are going to create we need key pairs this key pair will help us to log into that server in order to operate that machine in order to operate that virtual server so this key pair is required now since if we talk about physical server like physical data center we have firebox there we have multi multi layer of firewalls so in the same way we have security groups here so security groups are known as firewall rules you can control incoming as well as outgoing traffic with the help of these security groups for individual protocol whether it is tcp either it is udp or let us say some subset of tcp like it is http it is https it is ssh so any kind of protocol whatever you can think of you can control the incoming and outgoing traffic related to that particular protocol with the help of security group if i open it if i select all and if i want to delete all the security groups so default will not be deleted so there is a kind of thing only those security groups will be deleted which are not associated anywhere no associated resource if you see this particular section so then you will definitely get to know that these security groups are created but not associated anywhere so if let us assume that this particular security group is associated anywhere then in that particular case guys this security group would not be deleted only those security groups will get deleted which are not associated anywhere are we clear with that yes sir okay very good uh, like there is one question sir can i ask yeah please go ahead uh, sir can we use one security group for multiple ec2 instance yes we can use and, and uh, one more thing here is we can use multiple security group with one ec2 machine okay and same with like key pairs also now we can use multiple like one single key pairs with multiple uh, ec2 instance yes am i right we can do that okay sir we can do that for sure okay so uh, let me come back to this this is our ec2 dashboard so since i told you that we have these many uh, regions where we can operate right we have these many like regions where we can operate and if i want to see let us say this is a dashboard of one region which is known as mumbai which i have selected here right but if i want to see like if i might have created any other ec2 machine in any other available region then how do i need to check we can see the global view of ec2 so this is going to be global so this is going to let you know like if i might have created any kind of resource in any other region so it is going to tell you like enabled 17 regions how many instances are running how many vpcs are created how many auto scaling group egress endpoint vpc peering connection every dashboard every single information will be gathered here onto this single console then uh, like uh, resource regions count 28 so like aws provides you access to 28 global regions like different 28 locations are there where aws is operating as of today and based on your requirement you can easily create your resources within those regions
So this is still in progress. Okay. You have zero instance and zero reasons because we do not have any instance running. If you see here, we do not have any running instance, right? So let us do one thing. Let us try to understand this particular console first. Then after we are going to go ahead. Okay. Then after we are, we are going to talk about elastic IP. So guys, what is elastic IP? We need to understand that. Elastic IP is known as public IP. Now, when we create one EC2 machine, so we have a requirement that we want to associate our machine with public IP address. But why it is known as elastic? So let us say that once we create an EC2 machine and we associate a public IP address with this, so machine will definitely get created and an IP address will also be assigned to it. But if we stop that machine and we try to start it again, maybe after five minutes, after an hour or after a day or two. In that particular case, the public IP address associated may get changed. If you reboot your machine or if you stop and start your machine, so in that particular case, uh, very much chances are there that IP address of, the, of that particular machine will get changed. But if you want to have a static IP address, a static public IP address, I mean to say. Then in that particular case, that IP address is known as elastic IP. So now let us assume that we have associated one elastic IP address with a machine. So in that particular case, we may stop that machine, maybe for five minutes, maybe for five days, maybe for five months, irrespective of duration, IP address associated with the machine will not get changed. But yes, when we are talking about elastic IP address, these are chargeable. In such condition, let us say that you have created a machine, you have associated elastic IP address with this, and now you have stopped that machine. If the machine is in a stopped state, in that particular case, the IP address will become chargeable. It will be free until and unless the machine is in running state. Any question over here, guys? Yes, sir. Can you repeat once? Like, uh... yeah, sure. Why not? So, elastic IP is public IP address, or you can call that elastic IP is static public IP address, which is not going to get changed. Now, when it comes to cost, if the machine or the virtual machine which is consuming this IP address is running, elastic IPs are going to be free no additional charges will be there in your account. But if you stop the machine and still elastic IP address is associated, it will become chargeable. Elastic IP address will become chargeable if it is associated with a stopped machine. Are we clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And okay. uh, I have another question. Uh, can I ask? Please go ahead. How uh, how do organizations follow this one? I mean, uh, they will uh, assign a elastic IP for uh, the machines which are always in running state uh, because yes. they won't get chargeable. Yes. So, so how do organizations follow? organizations follow such a rule that they associate elastic IP address with those machines only which are being used as web servers? Because web servers, public IP address has to be static and all the servers should be into running state. Because if there is a web server where customers are coming and traffic and production traffic is being served, so those servers cannot be stopped. And if server is running, so the elastic IP address associated with it is going to be free. Now, let us take another scenario. Okay. Let us say that there is a database server. So, any organization which is following standard practices does not associate public IP address with database servers because database servers are never meant to be public. Or you can say like database servers never has a kind of public IP address. These, yes, are, sir, got it. these are associated either with email servers or with web servers. Okay. 
Now, these are events. Now, what does that mean, events? So, if any sort of events are going on, like there is a scheduled downtime for any service, there is a kind of upgrade going on in this data center. So, those kind of events will be listed down here. Since there is no event going on right now at this moment when we are just trying to uh, walk through this particular session, so there are no events. Now, if you want to talk about instances, you can create instance. Now, there are different type of instances. Obviously, this section we will review later on. But yes, right now we are going to see about the, the major component of it. Then after launch template. Now, let us say that I have to create multiple EC2 machines every single day. So why would I perform all the steps? I can create a template using which what would I ensure? Okay, let us say what particular OS I want to select. What key do I want to select? What should be the size of that EC2 machine? Let us say 2 GB or 4 GB RAM and 1 CPU or 4 CPU kind of. So that sort of information I can select within this template and within very short time, I can easily create multiple instances with our launch template. We will definitely do practical of it, but with auto scaling groups. When we will talk about auto scaling group, then we are definitely going to see the particular practical of this one as well. Yes, Rajesh. So as you told uh, that uh, when we terminate the machine, no, when we stop the machine, the private public changed. Yes. After after reconnecting, so what happened to the private IP? Sir? Private IP remains same. Always remains same. Yes, because private IP address is primary IP address of an EC2 machine. Private IP address is primary IP address because it never changes. Till the time machine is up and running, that IP address will never ever get changed. Okay. Thanks. Maybe you stop it, you reboot it, whatever you want, you can perform, but yes, IP address will not get changed. Okay. Okay. So now we have spot instances. Now, what does that mean, spot instance? So, spot instance means. That when we are talking about this particular section, spot instance, so it allows us a kind of facility that we can purchase instances at lower rate. Now, what does that mean, lower rate? What are the standard charges? So, we are going to see when instance type. So at that moment, I'll tell you like what are the kind of these features. What are spot instance? What are savings plan? What are reserve instances? What are dedicated hosts? We will definitely see all this but once we are able to create an ec2 machine now what are ami ami stands for amazon machine image so let us say this is a kind of pre-built template of an operating system which is going to be used in order to create ec2 machines right guys so this is a pre Create image which is used in order to create EC2 machines. Now, as I already told you, we have volumes. Volumes are the disk which are associated or may not be associated with any EC2 machine, but yes, these are available in your account. These are displayed in the volume section. Now, a snapshot the volumes which you have, if you want to create backup of those, then you can create a snapshot of it. Now, what is lifecycle manager? Now, there is a particular situation. Let us say I have to take backup every single day. There is an EC2 machine for which I have to take backup every single day. But I want to automate it. So what can I do in this particular case? I can very easily create a kind of rule which will be implemented under lifecycle manager so based on my set rule let us say i want to ensure that always 10 backups should be there but when 11th backup is going to be created so the very first one backup which i created maybe 10 days before or maybe a month before that should get deleted because end of the day this is going to help me to save some cost for my organization so initially people used to write kind of style script or kind of like a program and they used to execute that program just to ensure that they are able to create and remove snapshots of the selected volumes. But right now, AWS has already automated it, this particular thing. And now you can 
easily automate the backup of these volumes with the help of lifecycle manager. Now, there is a section with the, with the name with the name of network and security. So we have already discussed about security groups. These are firewall rules. We have discussed about elastic IP addresses. We have discussed about placement group, like when we want to have multiple servers onto the in, within the same group. So that is known as placement group. Now key pairs, we have discussed that this is going to be used in order to log into a server. Now network interface, like where IP address will be associated, that is known as network interface. Load balancers and target groups. We are going to discuss once we are able to understand like how do we create EC2 machine and all. So now let us begin with EC2 machine creation. So how do we create one EC2 machine? So guys, first of all, we need to understand that why are we going to create an EC2 machine? The very first thing. So we should have a very clear requirement in, in our mind that why is the machine required? What kind of software is going to run on that particular server? Now, let us say I want to create a data machine where my database server should be running. So the requirement which I want to have should be very clear. Like what kind of database I'm going to run? It is going to be disk intensive. It is going to be memory intensive. Like it will require a lot of memory, uh, which is known as RAM. Or it is going to be CPU intensive, like where a lot of calculations are going to be. So based on that requirement, we need to select easy to machines. Now let me give you kind of examples that what kind of machines we have and how do we select it wisely. Reason behind is because every single machine has different specification. So what kind of EC2 machines does AWS provide and what is going to be best fit for you? How will you be able to understand that what is going to be like uh, what kind of instance is going to meet your requirement? So we are going to see within this particular section, which is known as instance type. So right now we are here in Mumbai region and over here there are different categories like we have C type instance. Uh, like we have T type instance, A type, like a lot of instances are there. If you see like so many other categories are available here, right? You can see like what amount of virtual CPUs are there, how many GB of RAM are there, up to four, up to four terabyte of RAM is available with a single EC2 machine, up to 100 gigabit, gigabit network speed AWS servers are providing as of today. So what do I want to tell you here is, that what particular instance is going to fulfill your requirement? What is your need? So let me show you something. There are different kind of EC2 machines which are available. So I'll I'll tell you two type of instances. First of all, different type. Then after, different category within a single type. Okay, now let us say I want to have such a machine where, where let us say eight CPUs are there. Okay, let us say we are going to have T2.4x large. So this is a general, uh, this is a general use uh, purpose device where we can have multiple information. Like if I select here, you will get to know about like uh, the specification of this instance, such as what is the instance type? It is T2.x large. T2 is family type and x large is instance size. So this dot is going to define one thing here. First. The, the very first section before this dot is instance family type and large x large is small 2x large 8x large is going to define the hardware capacity of this machine. So if you see here, what is instance family? This is known as two like instance family is T2. Instance size is x large. What is hypervisor? Now, what does that mean hypervisor? So guys, if you remember last time we were talking about that, we need a kind of software in order to create virtual machines on the top of a physical server. Remember that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So what kind of software is utilized in order to create, like in order to create this particular type of server? So this is going to be Zen. Zen is a kind of hypervisor which usually comes for free with Red Hat operating system. Red Hat, CentOS, 
So these kind of operating system provides you Zen hypervisor for free. Now, these are some other options available here. We will go through all these within detail, but later on, not right now. Otherwise, it will be overwhelming. Okay, let us go back. So I want to select kind of machines. Okay, so if you see here, there is a particular thing to notice. If you see, every single machine has eight CPU, but the memory allocation is different. The very first machine, which comes with eight CPU and 32 GB of RAM, what is the cost of this machine? Like per hour cost. Zero point three nine six eight dollar. Next machine is C five dot two X large. It comes with eight CPU and sixteen GB of RAM, and the cost is zero point three four. Next machine, which comes with C seven G dot two X large, C seven G dot two X large machine comes with eight CPU and sixteen GB of RAM, but over here architecture is different. And it comes only for 0 0.1963, almost half of this particular machine. Then after, if you see this particular machine, M5 dot 2x large, it comes with 8 CPU and 32 GB of RAM and see the price. 0 0.404 dollar per hour. And these prices are for Windows. If you want to go for Windows, then these are the prices with license. Now, once again, there is a machine where we have R5.2x large. It says that you are going to get 8 CPU and 64 GB of RAM. Like if you select this kind of instance, you will get 1 CPU upon 8 GB of RAM. You will get 1 CPU upon 4 GB of RAM, 1 upon 2. So these are different kind of instances instance which you can select for your need. But before selecting this kind of instances, you guys should be very, very clear that what is your requirement here? Why do you want to create a machine? Because see, AWS is charging you pay as you go basis. The kind of resource you will utilize, AWS will charge for it. Now, if there is a requirement that you do not want to run that machine for, for pretty much long time, so why to have unwanted resources? Let us say you have selected this machine like R5.2x large, right? And now the machine is running ideal. Only let us say like 20 GB of RAM is being utilized and uh, hardly one, like not even 1% load is there. So what does that mean? You need to reduce the like size, like resources of your EC2 machine. Maybe you can change instance type or you can reduce the resources out of this machine. So that is why I said, that before launching a machine, we should have a very clear requirement in our mind that what do we want to run? Is it going to be for testing purpose? It is going to be for your, uh, let us say, production environment. It is going to be for your database, for web server, for middleware application, for some caching applications. Like what is going to be the purpose of that? Now, when the purpose is clear, is, is clear then you need to check that what kind of EC2 machine is going to fulfill your requirement. What should be the ratio like 1 upon 8, 1 upon 4, 1 upon 2. So what is going to be the ratio of your CPU and memory allocation? Are we clear with this, guys? Yes, sir. Any questions so far? Uh, no. Okay, good.
let us move on so now guys we are going to create this and one more thing i wanted to tell like show you uh, just give me a moment now within c category like we are like we are going to get one upon two resources like if we have one cpu then two gb of ram <clears throat> okay see the uh, like this particular list guys so all the instances are going to provide you same kind of capabilities like 8 cpu like 15 or 16 gb of ram now if you go this side you will see a lot of differences here first of all it is going to provide you 0 0.4 dollar per hour now the instance i will see 4.2x large and guys uh, these are the very initial instances which were created by amazon these were initial offerings from the side of aws c 4.2x large we are going to get 8 cpu 15 gb of ram high uh, like high network performance and the cost is 0 0.4 dollar per hour now if you just change the instance type you will get lower prices with the for the same resource type C 5.2x large, 8 CPU, 16 GB of RAM, up to 10 gig network speed, and the cost is a little down. Now, if you go to another type of instance, like C4, C6 G, like Graviton. So this G represents Graviton. So there is a kind of processor which is built by AWS itself. AWS owned processor, which is known as Graviton. That is why wherever you see G here, C6G, what does that mean? Graviton processor. A speed is a little less, but if you see the differences within price, so these are just half of your previous one for the same resources. So now guys, when you are working for an organization, so you need to be very wise while selecting these kind of resources. Reason behind is because you can just save the cost to half. If you just go for another kind of EC2 machine here, wherein you are going to get 8 CPU and 16 GB of RAM. And if you see the prices, okay, let us try to remove these two. This one and this one, let us try to remove this. Now we can do comparison within these two only. You see the price guys. What is the, like, what is the difference here? 0 0.34, 0 0.17 almost half and wherein we are going to get same resources so if someone is going to ask you that how does your organization select right instance size for the services which are going to be used in your organization so what you are going to say that we select a specific instance type based on the use case any question guys Sir, sir, as there like uh, no storage type mentioned here, so what will be the storage type? Like they're gonna use the SSD or like uh, like normal SDD? Okay, uh, that's what we are going to discuss within a while. Once we start creating the machine, then we will discuss about. It. Srinivas, sir, any question? So, okay, sir, one question. Now, as you said, initially there were certain types, family types, and then uh, uh, the sizes, right? And now right. gradually, uh, probably the storage cost is reducing or it has become more competitive. So now here, you know, there are C types, there are T types and all those things. But for uh, beginners like us, is there one place where we have this entire comparison where we can compare and see what is the best one? I mean, yes, this is this, a drop this, Yes, this is the one. If you go here on this particular console, you select this instance type, you can select different types and you will get to know about the storage, uh, like the capacity, the number of IP address one EC2 machine can support. Every single piece of information is listed down here. There is a long list of it. Okay, okay, okay. Just so go just get... go on to next page and you will see an, another type like C6i, 
you will you, like it has some specification like if you go on to next it has g5 it has okay. g, g5n i2 like there are different categories and what is the difference here like obviously it is going to have like 16 cpu and like 122 gb of ram different combinations are there okay we so see yeah. aws does not provide us an option to configure the ram and the kind of cpu based on our requirement for example if i want to have one cpu and 32 gb of ram so i cannot customize that but in order to have such kind of configuration i need to go through these particular templates which are pre configured by aws so these what? these are kind of instances which we need to go through and now let us say if we go like at end of this particular like page so up to 4 terabyte ram is available with one single ec2 machine like you can take a, take example of this like x2 iden metal this is bare metal server where you will get 128 cpu and 4 terabyte of ram and minimum like 300 like 3800 gb of ssd disk you will get along with this but if you see the network speed 100 gig is that So that way we can easily configure the machines based on our requirements. So if you want to see the pricing of it, this will be very cheap, I hope. Just $27.524 per hour. So if any one of you is planning to do kind of uh, practice, then you can select this instance within your account and your account balance will be nil within a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, joke, well, jokes are hard. Uh, so yes, this is a particular place where we can easily identify the kind of EC2 machine. So it is going to tell us like how many cores are there, how many threads per core we can have, what is sustained clock speed of this particular machine, what is memory size, right? Then after, uh, like it is bare metal, yes or no, you can get to know this is a physical server, then yes, it is bare metal false, it means it is a virtual machine. So that way. Okay, now let us go back and let, let us try to create one EC2 machine for us. So guys, creating EC2 machine is very easy. It hardly takes a minute or two. But when creating EC2 machine today, we are going to spend very good in a good like very good amount of time onto it. Why it is so? We need to understand the every single click which we are going to do. Like if we click, what would happen if we do not click? What it is going to make a difference? What sort of difference it is going to make? Right. So let us click on this button, launch instance. I will walk you through each and every single point of this particular EC2 machine creation. Okay, so name, what does that mean? When you create an EC2 machine or whenever you create a virtual server, so there has to be a name, right? Now, if I ask you what should the naming convention? Like when we create EC2 machine, like let us say, I'm going to define here this. Linux box, what does it mean? useless name so it has to be now first of all what kind of software i'm going to run here let us say it is web server what web server apache where it is going to run dmz demilitarized zone right then after it is going to be in broad zone or it is going to be in sit or maybe in kind of UAT, different zones are there. We will discuss with the coming session for sure. So web server where Apache is running, it is in DMZ and it is for prod zone. So this is very, very clear. Now it is a web server where Apache is running in DMZ, DMZ like the militarized zone where very high and tight security is there. And this is a production server. So naming convention has to be very, very clear. First of all, obviously you can define like prod first of all, then after you can define a DMZ, then after Apache, then after web server. But the message has to be very, very clear, like what kind of utilization it is going to be. 
it helps us identify our resource utilization. One more thing is there. Okay, I, I'll come on to it later on. So now, what kind of operating system you are going to select here? It is going to be Amazon Linux. It is going to be Mac OS. It is going to be Ubuntu. It is going to be Windows, Red Hat, Suze, or maybe Debian. So different kind of operating systems are available, or you can browse more AMIs onto this particular platform. So for my use case, for this particular session, I would prefer to select Red Hat 9. This is known as R-H-E-L, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. This is the latest operating system available for free in AWS. Now, while selecting <clears throat> this particular, so there are two things which we need to uh, like select very carefully. So there are two kind of operating systems available here. First of all, it is going to be the architecture we are talking about. Either it could be 64-bit x86 or it could be 64-bit ARM. So guys, if you select ARM, you are definitely going to get the Graviton processors only. If you remember, I was talking about C6G instance. Then I was talking about C7G instance, right? Remember that? Yes, sir. So if you select this ARM, what does that mean? It is going to provide you only Graviton processors. If you select x86, in that case, both are going to be of 64 bit. Bits are not going to be different. Like your CPU compatibility is going to be 64 bit only. But if you talk about processor, so it will be Graviton. It will be your normal AMD, Intel, or maybe any other processors are going to be there. So for this particular practical, for this particular session, we are going to go with Intel or with AMD. We are not going to select Graviton processors, right? So we need to be very careful while selecting this architecture. One more thing here is we need to see here what kind of virtualization it is going to be. It should be HVM. What does that mean? HVM stands for Hardware Assisted Virtualization. Hardware Assisted Virtualization. That is known as HVM. Now, ENA, Elastic Network Address, it is true, like public IP address can be associated with if you want. Elastic Network Adapter, it is known as, then after, Root Device Type, this is EBS. Now, what does that mean, EBS? It stands for Elastic Block Storage. Sorry. Now, that means... So, one question can I ask? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir like in vms generally aws what uh, prefers like type 1 or type 2 like what we get generally uh come again. not choosing the bare metals if i'm not choosing the bare metals what type of vm generally like uh, aws offers is type 1 or like type 2 type 2 okay sir okay and that is the that, that is the bifurcation we are talking about here so if you select ebs as your root device type or your uh, volume type that means that if you stop your machine and if you, if you try to boot it again, your data will not be lost. But if you see here instance store, in place of EBS, Elastic Block Storage, if you see here instance store, this particular category I'm talking about, in that particular case, your data will not be available if you stop and start your machine. Your data will be lost. So in case of instance store, your data is available only till the time your machine is up and running. Those machines are only used for testing purpose. Those kind of instances are never recommended for any production use case. Because let us say due to any reason, maybe accidental, maybe due to software installation requirement of kind of, if you reboot your server, your data will be lost. Okay. Now. Obviously, these are the type of instance which we have. So this T2.micro is a type of machine where you are going to get one vCPU, one virtual CPU, and one GB of RAM. And it is free tier eligible. Now, what does that mean? If you utilize this machine for one calendar year from the date of your account creation. For example, I created this account somewhere in uh, like June, right? So... I can utilize one EC2 machine for one calendar year for free. I will not be charged for anything. It, it is going to be free. But if I select any other type, 
so the price of that machine are displayed here that how much i will be charged per hour in order to run this machine so based on this particular charges it will be somewhere 8.5 dollar per month if i utilize 1 gpu and 1 gb of ram and up to 33 zero 30 gb of storage <clears throat> okay now select the key pair what does that mean so whenever i create a machine obviously i need to have a kind of key pair which i can select obviously i can create different key pairs for different machine but if you want to have only one key pair for multiple machines so that is fine you can have one key pair for multiple machines or you can have different key pair for different machines but now let us say if you have 1000 servers so for 1000 servers it is never recommended to have 1000 key pairs now how do we want to have the key pairs what should be the ideal strategy to create key pairs so let us say we have web servers so for all web servers we may have only one or maybe two key pairs like one key pair for production servers one key pair for non production servers another key pair we can create for database another key pair we can create for maybe proxy servers so different administrators can have diff access to different keys but it should not be like we have one key pair for one server so let us assume that if the number of servers increases to 2000 so is it really going to be that we are going to maintain 2000 key pairs obviously not <clears throat> so we can have one key pair for one uh, set of servers or maybe two key like two key pairs for one set of servers not more than that not recommended otherwise the manageability is going to be really tough uh, really strong really tough now networking section what does that mean so whenever we create any ec2 machine so that machine has to be created that virtual server has to be created in a vpc now what does that mean it stands for virtual private cloud vpc is a topic it's within itself and this, this is really important to understand this involves networking section of your amazon like whatever kind of networking is required that is required to configure a vpc only right so let us say for now that it is going to be kind of isolated virtual network where only your servers will be created no other one in the world will be able to access your resource until you want them to access your resources this is going to be completely isolated network infrastructure so this is known as vpc this is the id of vpc now subnet what does that mean so guys aws has at least three data centers aws has at least three data centers within one region so if you see mumbai is a region here and these three are data centers like we have ap south 1b 1a and 1c so these are three different data centers which we have these all three data centers are known as availability zones <clears throat> second thing all the three data centers are physically isolated like the power sources the backup the secu physical security the power supply power connection every individual identity which is required to operate a data center are isolated are separate here right so these are three availability zones i can select any of wherever i want reason behind is why do i need to select a different availability zone for different server so let us say i want to run three different servers for my web server now if if my if one of my server goes down so obviously i have i have two more but now let us say there is a disaster situation there is a natural calamity is going on in that case one data center goes down entirely let us say some construction work is going on and someone has cut the internet connection cable which was connecting that data center to the world or to the internet so in that particular case the connectivity is broken the servers which are running in that particular data center will no longer be accessible over internet so what does that mean my website will definitely go down in that particular case right so what is required in that particular case guys here we can select 
different availability zone for running our different servers. So that is why in order to ensure high availability of your servers, if we are going to create three different servers, we need to save all the three servers running into different availability zones. Are we clear with that? Yes. Can okay. we select like uh, multiple subnets for a single EC2 instance? No, we cannot. So let us say that if you have created one virtual machine, so how can it run within three data centers? One EC2 machine can run within one data center only. Right? Uh, okay, sir. Your one virtual server cannot run within multiple data centers. Okay. Now there is an option, auto send public IP. So you have an option to enable or to disable it. But for this particular section, uh, obviously I need to select it as enabled. Reason behind is because after creation of this particular machine, I need to log into that. And if I do not assign public IP address, how will I be able to log into that machine? For example, I want to install any kind of software into it, or maybe I want to uh, like create kind of server. I want to see the size of it. I want to check the load of it. How will I be able to access it? So for now, I need to enable public IP address association with this particular machine. Now the very next section here is firewall which is known as security group. So within your interview guys, people during interview would not ask, okay, how do you configure firewall for EC2 machine? Most of chances are there, they will ask you, okay, how do you manage your security groups? So if anyone is talking about firewall or the same word, which is known as security group is like is repeated or is being asked to so, like, you will definitely refer to a firewall on. It is not necessary or it is not mandatory that a person will call it security group only. A person may call it firewall or a person may call it security group. So in that particular situation, you guys need to refer these two words altogether that firewall is also known as security groups. Are we clear with that? <clears throat> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now let us create a new security group. Web server. Fraud DMZ. I can select here, let us say HTTP. From anywhere, let us say. Like HTTP is a protocol for web servers. The port number remains 80. SSH is a protocol to take remote access of the server. Protocol is TCP, port number is 22. And this IP address means from anywhere in the world. Whoever has access to internet can try to reach out to the server if has proper credentials. Now guys, the very next rule here is for like, how do we configure storage? So I'm going to associate a disk of 10 GB. And there is a particular word written in known as GP2, general purpose type two. The volume is not encrypted so far. Now there was a question. So do we associate general purpose disk do we associate SSD or do we have HDD type? Like what kind of disk do we have? So guys, there are these seven different type of disks are there. First of all, it is known as GP2. By default, AWS offers GP2. Right? But when we talk about what are the advantages of it? What are the use cases of it? So in that particular case, let us try to add another, another volume here. And if you see here, so G by default, it is redirecting you to GP3. So GP3 and GP2 both have different uh, like uh, features of it. Let me go to advanced. So if I select here GP3, it is going to provide me at least 3000 IOPS. 
Now, what does that mean, IOPS? Input output per second. We can perform 3000 IOPS, like IO, input output operation within a single second. If it is GP3, one more. If the size of disk is only 8 GB, though, though even we can perform this, this much operation. Now, let us say if I make it to GP2, so you will see here the information is modified here. You will get 100 IOPS. You will get minimum 100 IOPS and it can go up to maximum 3000 IOPS, which is also not configurable. If I select here IO1, this option becomes configurable and you can increase it up to, let us say, you can increase it up to maximum 64,000. But keep this thing in mind, guys. What is the size of this disk? Yes, guys. 8 GB, sir. 8 GB. Very good. 8 GB, sir. It is only 8 GB. And with 8 GB, I can perform to 64,000 IOPS per second. Like IO operations. Input, output, operation per second, I can perform to 64,000. So these are the specifications. Now, if we talk about IO2, so let us say if I want to increase it, so it can also allow you between 100 to 64,000. So, okay, sir, one question. So, if we make any changes to this IOPS, again, our cost will increase. Huh? Yes, definitely. Okay. So, if someone says, okay, what is the ideal disk type to be associated with that EC2 machine? That is GP3. Because it gives you 3000 IOPS. And if you talk, and even like 150, like 125 throughput as well. So this is a single type of EC2, like EC2 volume, or like you can call that EBS volume, which provides throughput as well as IOPS. And also this is configurable. And this feature, it is going to provide only with 8 GB. But if you increase the size of it to 800 or maybe like uh, to something bigger, so it will allow you to have more IOPS here. So based on your requirement, we can easily define like how many IOPS do we want to have, right? And just to add to your statement, uh, Sri sir, so definitely if we want to have a specific type of volume here, so we can definitely change it from here. And guys, one more thing. Sometimes during interview, usually people ask that my system is not performing well. So can I modify my volume on the fly? Will it require downtime or not? So yes, guys, we can easily modify the volume type from GP2 to GP3 within runtime without any downtime. There will be no performance like impact. You can perform it in real time without any problem. Now guys, there are some advanced details. I will walk you through for uh, like uh, with these details as well. Like purchasing option. What does that mean? Request spot instances. So what is the meaning of a spot instance? It means, let us say I want to go to my office. There are multiple ways. Either if it is not really long distance, I can walk. But let us say it is 20 kilometers. So walking 20 kilometers is not really easy. It will take hours time. So I can do another thing. I can take a bike or I can uh, take a car from my own place. Or let us say if I know that I will not get kind of parking place or there may be a lot of traffic or I may need to perform some other operations while I'm traveling. Let us say I, I want to check emails or something. So what can I do? I can hire a cab. Right? So it can be based on monthly basis or it can be based on on-demand basis. So spot instances are those servers. Spot instances are those servers which are parked in AWS infrastructure and AWS want to lease these servers for very low prices. But only till the time. Some other one is not demanding for that. Okay, let us take an example. Let us say for 20 kilometers of ride, one cab driver charges, let us say 1000 rupees. But since the driver is free, so the company says that, okay, do one thing, you go 
pick some passenger and drop it for just 200 rupees to the destination. But if someone hires you in between, drop this passenger to, let us say, you drop him like after 10 kilometers. You drop the person after 10 kilometers. Charge only 100 rupees for 10 kilometers. After that, drop that passenger in the midway. And then after you start your next journey with the, with the right fare. So there is no guarantee that for how long AWS has allocated this instance to you. As and when required, AWS can revoke the instances from your account. Irrespective, your services will be impacted or not. Because these are really cheap instances. You may get these up to 85% like cheaper price. For spot instances, but there is no guarantee that when AWS will revoke the instance from your account. Are we clear with that? What are spot instances? And uh, one more question, like sir, uh, if AWS revoked it, like uh, then what will happen to our data and all, like the instance running everything with the data? Be, and... Everything will get lost. Okay. Generally, otherwise we have ways to. Uh, recover our data before instant terminates we can recover the data so that's a different thing we will come on to it within troubleshooting and within architecture designing uh, that piece okay Sir, now uh, but aws will be notifying us now like uh, they will be revoking uh, this instance and all we'll we will be getting the notification, we'll get a notification before two minutes of in instance termination and it is not practically possible to copy your data within two minutes only if you have huge amount of data So there are ways we will discuss onto it, but later on. So like if you are going to create a Windows server, you want to associate with that kind of AD, Active Directory, you can do, you can do that. Now that is IAM instance profile. What does that mean? IAM, that is not AMI, the initial one which we selected. That is known as IAM, Identity and Access Management. We will discuss onto it in very detail, but yes, for now you can understand that you can grant this instance some special permissions to perform some other operations. That is known as IAM. You can select your, your uh, permissions from here. I don't have any permission created so far, so definitely I am not going to associate it. Now, how do you want to see the host name associated with this? Like, you want to see the host name as IP address or the resource name. These two options are available. Moreover, enable resource-based IPv4 A record DNS requester. So this is an additional feature which has been recently enabled by AWS. If you want to have kind of custom domain name, you can select this. So custom host name for that EC2 machine, which is going to be created. Now, do you want that instance to be auto recovered? For example, the instance goes in, in hung state. That is not accessible. What do you want? Do you want that instance to be restarted? Do you want that to be? Like what, what sort of behavior do you want? What like what should happen if your machine is going to be shut down? Do you want to stop it or do you want to terminate it? So obviously within production environment, this option is never recommended. This option is never recommended within production environment to terminate instance if you stop it. Then after stop behavior, hibernate behavior. What is hibernate behavior, guys? What uh, is sleep, sir, like data? sleep, like it will uh, store the data in the memory, like background. Very true. And it will not only store data into background, but when the server is going to come up, it will reload the data onto RAM. Okay, then it is termination production, whether you want to enable it, let us say, Someone should not be able to delete the server accidentally. If someone is trying to delete the server knowingly, only then this option will be visible, otherwise not. Same thing you can do with like stop protection, detailed cloud watch monitoring. Yes, guys, this sort of question usually come during interview and during exam as well. If you're planning to appear for the AWS exam, then this question uh, usually comes up there. Then what is the span of detailed monitoring? This is like detailed monitoring, cl detailed cloud watch monitoring. You can enable or you can disable it if you enable this. So at this particular moment, AWS will start monitoring your resources every one minute. But if it is default or it is disabled, now AWS will monitor your resource every five minutes. 
so in case of production environment it is never recommended to have de like default monitoring since we cannot tolerate that level of downtime with our servers now it is credit specification so this particular option is applicable only for the only for t type of instances now placement group if you have any then after ebs optimized volume this is by default disabled then after capacity reservation for okay now let us say that you have a very uh, big sales coming in maybe like uh, this this saturday at 12 pm like 12 in the day you want to launch 200 extra servers but suddenly you get to know aws does not have resources to provision 200 servers just imagine just think of it aws does not have that level of capacity where you can provision that level of servers so what would happen you will not be able to create new resources and your sale will go in vain that will be destroyed reason behind is a lot of customers are coming in and your infra will go down so in order to get out of this sort of situation what can you guys do here is you can reserve some specific type of ec2 machines for your upcoming workload right guys So you can have capacity reservation tenancy you can you can see here like you can have a dedicated instance you can have a shared instance dedicated host like you can have this kind of tenancy here that you want to run a shared instance on shared hardware you want to run a kind of dedicated host in aws so that sort of information you can select from here but yes if you select any anything apart from default so you will be extra charged now ram disk id kernel id so these are very advanced options we will see it when we will talk about uh like ami creation backup of it and all then we will try to go through this particular section so if you have kind of software which you are going to install on it and you want to supply the license for it so you can select license now if you want to select metadata information like data of data is not as metadata you can select it from here like version information you can select here like if you want to allow tags like multiple tagging information if you want to do you can do that now, if you want to execute kind of commands at the time of EC2 machine creation, you can define those commands here. Like these will be started executed as a startup script. Now, what we can do here is we can just click on this launch instance and, we, and that is it. Our instance will be created within a while. So there are two ways, either we can click here, view all instance, or we can directly click onto this particular ID. So if we click on this, so only one instance will be visible, but let us say there are a couple of others. So we can click on view all instances. So this will, this will not select only this one instance, but all the running instance will be visible here at this particular section. Are we clear with that guys? Yes, sir. So see, we took hardly one hour in order to create one EC2 machine. Otherwise, usually people take one to two minutes only to create EC2 machine. But since we were trying to explore each and every option of it, that is why we took this much time. Okay. Let us try to see the options of it now. Okay. So first of all, instance summary, this is the instance ID. This is name of the server. This is public IP address. This is private IP address. IPv6 is not associated. This is host name of this machine. Then after this is private IP and uh, private DNS IP. This is like public DNS name. Elastic IP is not associated here. This is instance type. Once again, this is VPC. This is compute optimization option. This is the subnet where EC2 machine is created. Monitoring is not enabled here, like detailed monitoring we are talking about. This is the AMI ID which is selected in order to create this machine. This is the AMI name. You can figure it out. When machine is created here, what are the like uh, hardware, like what are the like uh, production we have here, like stop production, stop production, termination, productions, every sort of information you can easily figure it out. But if you want to see by segment, you can see like this is detailed. Now you can talk about security information only here, that what are the security rule, like rule open, 
what are the kind of port numbers open for this particular server you can you want to see only the networking segment you can see that here you want to see the story segment that is available here you want to see the status of instances yes it is running so yes this is very important guys so usually people ask during interview what is the difference of system status check and instance status check the difference between these two, this particular question is usually asked during interview. What does that mean? So if you talk about system status check, so AWS checks the health of underlying hardware on which this virtual machine is running. That is system status check. Now AWS ensure to check the health of that EC2 machine itself which is running. So this is for that virtual machine health and this is for the physical server on which this virtual machine is running. Are we clear with that? Yes, sir. Okay, now one more thing I would like to share here. And the thing here is, now let us assume that any of this instance here get failed. Any of, maybe this one or maybe this one, what will you do? Because you do not have a lot of options to perform. Then what will you do in such case? Guys, what will you do? First of all, we can create an alarm and after that alarm, we can perform some action. There is only one thing which you can do if this particular instance goes into status check failure. We can just reboot the machine. Nothing else we can do. If this machine is in instant check failed state, we cannot do anything else except rebooting the machine. For further troubleshooting, we can reach out to AW support team to understand that why this happened. But we can only do one thing with this machine, we can reboot it. Then after we can talk about monitoring section of this machine. So yeah, this is monitoring section of it. We can see like what sort of like what is UCP utilization, status check field, uh, like uh, it is about network utilization, it is about your disk utilization, your CPU credit, balance. So this sort of information we can figure it out from here. We can add more tags here if you want. Okay, so any questions so far guys? No, sir. Okay, now let's come to uh, next point. Like, how do we access it? How do we uh, start performing operation onto this machine? Just hit here on this particular button known as connect. You will go to SSH client. Copy this example. And now come on to terminal. But there can be a question like, let us say that currently I'm utilizing this Mac operating system, right? What if... Someone has Windows. Then, guys, there is a software which is known as Git Bash. This is a software which is utilized just to have this type of terminal. You can execute Linux command into this. You will select here Windows. You will, when you will hit here, it will ask you that what kind of operating, like operation so you have like 62 bit or 32 bit. This is setup and this is portable. So portable means this will not ask you to install the software, but it will just open and start executing. So you can select your Windows operating system here and you can install it. So this will give you this kind of cell. Uh, we can use putty also, sorry, like. Yes, you can use putty as well. Okay, now, paste that command here and that is it. It will ask you that, okay, do you, do you know that where you are trying to connect? Are you sure? Do you feel it is secure? I'll say yes, and that's it. 
and I am inside that newly created EC2 machine. It is up for last six months only. This is iPad of that machine. If you go to this particular console, you will get to know that this is the iPad of this machine. See, this is the IP address, which is displayed onto this particular page, and same information is available here. So yes, guys, any questions so far? No, sir. No. Okay, very good. So now, what can we do with this particular machine? So first of all, we can connect. We can stop the machine. We can reboot or we can terminate the machine. Terminate means delete. Reboot means restart. Stop means to shut down the machine. Okay. So there are a couple of other things like we can manage this instance, manage instance state. So obviously there will be three state once again. You can you can change the state to stop, reboot, or terminate. Now we can once again go back here. You can talk about instance settings. What does that mean? You want to change like per termination protection. So these sort of options will be visible once you select it. Like what do you want? You want to attach this instance to order scaling group, terminate protection. Like these options are available here. So multiple options are available, whatever you want. Let us say you want to change the instance type. So for changing instance type, this is also an interview question, guys, that can we change instance type without rebooting, without stopping a machine? No, we cannot change EC2 machine instance type without re without stopping a machine. We have to stop it first. Then after if you talk networking, so you can talk about like attach network interface, deattach, connect to RDS database, connect uh, like source type destination, uh, and then after manage IP address, you want to associate, you want to change, uh, that, that, that sort of information you can manage here. You want to talk about security group of it, you can do that. You want to take backup of EC2 machine, you can you can do that as well from here. We will talk in detail in coming session, but for now, right now, these are the particular options which you can do. Now, if you want to see the like system logs, like when the system is started up, so what happened? So that kind of like troubles for this, this is utilized for troubleshooting. Let us say after five minutes, your instance is not coming up. You can get to know like at what stage the error is because see, since you do not have physical access to it, but as, at least you have access to these particular boot logs. Are we clear with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, moreover, if you want to see like at like what's what is the console screen right now? Like let us say in system log you got some error. Now you want to see whether you will be like, like able to log in or not. Then you can definitely see and uh, kind of you will be able to get to know like what is the status of your machine. And you can download these logs and then after you can analyze it. So are we clear with that, guys? Yes, sir. But uh, now if you want to enable the elastic IP, how we can do that, sir? Okay. So in that particular case, go to this elastic IP address. Yeah. Uh, you go here, allocate elastic IP address. Select the reason. AP South 1. Allocate. This IP address is allocated. Now go to actions. Associate elastic IP. See, it is instance or any interface. Obviously, I'll, I, I would like to in, associate it with instance. Select instance here. That is it. Go to instance.
It is available now. Go so to if, if I start, if, if I stop and start the machine, then IP address will not get changed now. Let us try to see that. Stop. See, the IP address is still associated. Right? Now, if I start it again, so it is going to remain same. So let us see the IP address. Same IP address is there, right? Yes, sir. So, okay, guys, since it is very first class, that is it for today. And uh, hope to see you tomorrow as well. Uh, look at, sir, if you can just uh, help me with one thing. Now, whatever the IP address you show, is public and you created one security group, right? So from my system, can I access this IP? Which one? This one? Ah, yes, you can access that, but uh, you need to have that particular key as well in order to log into this machine. Ah, so, so how will that be provided? Uh... So every single person, whoever is going to perform this sort of practical, right? Ah. So the person needs to create its own AWS account and then perform practicals. Got it. Got it. One more thing here is, as soon as your practical is done, please ensure to terminate these resources else you will be charged in unwanted manner. And see, it is saying that you have an elastic IP address associated with this machine. Please do not forget to deassociate it. Mm. Terminate machine and go to elastic IP. First of all, select it. Really, like first of all, deassociate. And after deassociating it, you will get an option to release the public, uh, like release elastic IP. Okay. Yeah. Now it is available for anyone else to use it, right? Now, some other person may utilize this IP address. Got it. So, so from your I, system, like, how I do you the AWS charge for those IP address, those elastic IP addresses, which are not associated with any machine. So, just AWS wants to ensure that the the unwanted utilization of public IP address should not be there. That is why AWS charge for it. Otherwise, oh. if you see, as long as a like uh, IP address is associated with EC2 machine, AWS does not charge you anything. Is guys any questions so far? No, no. Okay, fine then. No, sir. So let us call it a day for today. I'll share the recording session via YouTube to, with every one of you. See, hope to see you tomorrow. Till then, take care and God bless you all. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Take care.